live on we're live on Instagram, we're live on uh, Facebook, and uh, and I'm also live via podcast. So podcast is actually being recorded as I'm doing this video. So here's what this literally means. This means um, the video is going to be short, but there's after the video, the podcast will continue. Of course, for those of you who want to get the rest of what I share about in this video, you can actually listen to the podcast. So uh, three things are happening live now. And um, yeah, that's, that's all that. Actually, this is sort of like the first leg of it. This is like the first test of it. So anyway, um, I, will, uh, I will just focus in here on this video and uh, kick it off. So now that we've got the technical pieces handled, um, we're in Facebook Live mode. We're in, let me move the camera here. Ruby Run, it's fashion bedtime. <laughs> Ruby Ring Run. Um, so I'm doing this live tonight, um, like I mentioned, in three, three arenas. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram Live, and, and the podcast is being recorded. And the reason why I wanted to do this uh, recording was because of something I think, I mean, it's part of the programming, right, of the chill code and the 25 blueprint. But for practical purposes, here's where we're at. It is day 19 of the year, right? Let me make sure I got it. So it's day 19. And at this point in time, on any given year, this is probably like where like whatever your goals are, whatever your ambitions are, whatever your intentions are, um, they're now starting to fade if they haven't already faded, right? They've already sort of like, you know, they, they're gone. Right. So if you said you were going to lose weight or gain muscle, um, start exercising, start praying consistently, start doing whatever, making new friends, getting out more, um, you know, start working towards a new career. By now, day 19 of the year, right, at the, at the you know, time that this is being recorded, like all your ambitions, all your hopes, all your fill in the blank. Um, is now starting to fade, right? It's starting to kind of, you're, you're actually kind of maybe starting to laugh at yourself at how you start every year wanting something to change, wanting something to be dramatic, but you're back into your old patterns. And the purpose of this particular effort right now is to just really break through that, is to disrupt that predictable pattern of uselessness, right? That we fall into where we are not, um, able to really celebrate who we're becoming or stay consistent on the path of becoming whatever that other version of us is that we want to be. So how do we do, how do you do that? How do you construct a self or a life that supports the self that you want to become, right? That's the real problem. That's the real issue. And what I discovered, you know, along the way, and if you haven't gotten a chance to kind of like hear a little bit about my story, um, you know, I've lived many lives, right? Um, I, had, I had a life as an engineer, I had a life as an urban planner, I had a life um, as, you know, what happened at life after urban planning. Um, there was some consulting, actually some social, social and enterprise consulting that I did and pushed, pushed to do. And, uh, and so, like, my life has taken on different forms, right? And at every sort of stage of it, there was something that was produced, right? It was an outcome. It was a book or a series of lectures, a video or whatever it was. It was something that was produced, something that probably was created, um, but I kept reinventing myself. And so now going into this new era, you know, one of the things I discovered along the way was a structure of being able to consistently and reliably hold myself accountable to is moving into the future. And I just said a word right there about, you know, self being accountable, which I think is probably the most underrated, underestimated, um, concept when it comes to transformation. You know, when people really actually sometimes, depending on how uh, much they know themselves, when people really want to actually take it to the next level, sometimes they'll hire a coach to guide them. And the reason why they hire a coach is because one, yeah, the coach might know a little bit, some, you know, something, something about whatever their physical ambitions are. But more than anything is because their ass is on the line because they're, uh, they are paying a certain amount of money, right, to show up for someone to tell them what to do. And in some cases, the um, person who's actually, you know, working with the coach, in some cases, they actually might know more, 
right? But the main thing is that they are paying for accountability, right? And so for the most part, since we don't trust ourselves to be accountable to the changes we want to make, we sooner or later forget what it was that we wanted to do or how important it was because there, there isn't any accountability. Now, in addition to that accountability, there are no structures of, of accountability, right? In other words, it's like there's no, um, there's no documents, there's no tracking sheets, there's nothing that we're doing or have in place to support us in becoming this elevated version of ourselves. And so let, let's really think about this, right? Um, if, if you are, you know, have an ambition to become a champion athlete, chances are you actually have to measure how fast you run. You must have to measure how, how high you jump. If you're a javelin throw, how far you can throw or whatever it is that your sport is. Like there is no higher performance without accountability, without measures of, of, of uh, performance or improvement. Like you just, you don't, you, all you have is just a wish, a hope, a prayer, uh, fingers crossed for something to change. So ultimately for me on, on this journey, what I realized was in any given week or in any given day that there is a process or a protocol to go through. And I don't care what it is for you, right? But I'll share what it has been and what it has evolved to uh, for me inside of the Chill Code program. And here's what it came down to. On any given day, you have to know what are the measures and the metrics of success today, right? Today, not tomorrow, not two days from now, not next week, but today. So in other words, um, you know, part of my life is in sales, right? I have to know how much did I sell today? And what I started to account for was how many customers I transacted with, how many contacts have I uh, received? Right? Sometimes who did I, you know, who did I reach out to, right? How many messages did I send? How many phone calls did I make? Um, of course, you know, I mentioned sales, you know, or, or a particular item or whatever it is that I've sold. Like I've got to be able to quantify that, right? In order for me to know, well, how am I, how am I really doing? I know in any given week what my volume needs to be. I know in any given two weeks what my volume needs to be. And at the end of any given month, what my volume needs to be. So knowing your metrics, knowing your numbers, knowing your measurables, right? This is the first step of self accountability, right? Most of the time, we don't have a specific measurable threshold for our own performance. Once you know this, right, once you know this, you then are in a position to ask yourself, well, what are my options to fulfilling or reaching that particular measure? Okay, so I know I'm speaking generally, but because I just know each person has whatever their thing is. Yeah, I don't know. If it, for you, maybe writing a book. I don't know. Maybe... Uh, you know, completing, um, you know, a four minute mile, right? Whatever that thing is, that's like an ambition for you, you know what that is. And so if it is, you know, let's say uh, running, you know, every day how fast you need to be moving, right? You know, um, you know, whatever part of the uh, part of the leg of the race is that you need to be moving at a particular pace. Maybe you're measuring your heart rate, measure, measuring your strides, you know, it varies, but whatever it is, you have to know the specific numbers. From there, you got to know what actions you have to take in order to reach those numbers, right? How many transactions does it take? Or how many strides, you know, how, you know, how many, uh, yeah, how many strides you need to take per whatever leg of the race is for you to reach a particular outcome? Like everyone knows whatever that thing is. So first of all, if you don't know what your measurable results are or measurable impact needs to be, you're screwed, you're done. Just give up right now and call it a day. So that's step one. Now, depending on what area it is, if it's in your spirituality, your finances, your relationships, your emotional well-being, or your physical well-being, right? Like you've got to have a particular number in one area. My focus is for the core, right? Whatever I want to accomplish over the next three months that I, that I want to see happen. So from there, right, within that quarter, I know specific measurable outcomes that I have to have. If we just say take the, the arena of uh, finances, right, you got to have whatever your what's called best life number is, right? That's like, well, how much should you be earning in order for you to really be experiencing your best life, right? So you know whatever that is, and then you ask yourself, well, how many hours of work do you need to put in or how much sales do you have to you know, produce in order for that to happen? Once you get to this point, 
The next thing is knowing what actions you need to take. This is where I don't have it with me, or I may have it with me. Actually, I should show it to you. Um, I have a document that is kind of written in here. You might be able to see. Hard to see here, but you can kind of get a hint, you know, kind of get a glimpse of it, right? All right. So this document here has, you can't see at the top of it, but it says at the top, daily intentions and outcomes. This is actually what some of you have or will get if you get a 24-hour blueprint document, right? So the 24-hour blueprint playbook is available, um, but it's available only for those who take the chill code quiz, right? So this document tells me what I need to do on any given day of the week, right? So, you know, it's each box represents a day of the week, okay? And I'm really glad actually that I did this because I think I've been talking about this, but I realize that props always make things very, very clear. I don't know if you guys can see this over here. All right, I'm gonna wave at a couple people who are joining me on, um, or who join me on uh, Instagram. So anyway, all that said, daily your daily intentions and outcomes is a tool that allows you to know what on any given day, given your goal, where you should be headed and what you should be doing, right? Uh, in the direction of your goals. Now, how do you get stuff on here? Well, in order for you to know what goes on here, you actually have to take the chill code quiz, right? And that chill code quiz is what gives you an opportunity to assess your overall performance. So on a scale of one to five, right? Um, you get to rate and score yourself and determine like, well, how you doing, right? And when you score yourself as far as how you're doing, that's how you know what area to work on, right? Or what area you wanna be coached on. So once you know what that area is, the next thing is there's actually an opportunity for you to schedule a coaching call, right? Or actually, I'm sorry, watch a webinar, right? That kind of trains you in the secrets that are behind this whole system. That webinar kind of opens your mind to a, a few shocking things. Um, things like why yoga and meditation may not actually work as far as causing you uh, less stress, right? Um, why the 2080 rule is uh, is a joke. Right? You get to like really see some of these things that people have been telling us about how to manage our time, why they don't work, or why they don't work as well as you'd like them to work. Um, so after that webinar, you get an opportunity along the way to download one of these, but not just one of these, an entire 25 Blueprint playbook. And that 25 Blueprint playbook is where you start to see like your life on paper, right? In a series of Blueprint documents. Once you do that, once you have that, you know, start using that particular method, this is why um, the webinar is so important, right? Because the webinar starts to show you how to use these documents, right? The training webinar starts to show you how to use these documents in order for you to move from point A to point B, right? And whatever your point A and point B is, it's gonna be different for different people. But the main thing is, you know, um, I, I guess I have a hypothesis ultimately that this year, um, people want to make big changes, but they're afraid. It's going to look like just every other year of the past decade, and they don't know how to hold themselves accountable. They don't know how to, um, how to actually just finally just, you know, move forward without like being back where they started. And out of that sensitivity, you know, my hypothesis is that there is now more than any other time a real need for specific, practical easy to use and implement tools to support people in being able to get to point A to point B without all the noise, without all the hype, but just have some solid, groundbreaking, eye-opening guidance or coaching or whatever it is that can help them begin to trust themselves as they get to that next level, right? So if that's you, whatever that next level is for you, um, this is really just an ideal time for you to participate, for you to engage in your own transformation and move forward in the direction of your bliss, all right? So this past week, I put up some quotes um, as the days are, are, you know, have been playing out. And, um, and some of them are really sort of like out of awakening and reflection and insight into just life patterns, right? Things that I've seen happen, seen unfold, and things that are actually very relevant. And... You know, I talked about baby steps a few weeks ago and the power of baby steps and how, you know, uh, normally when we think about baby steps, we kind of get, we, we get a little bit, um, what's the word, uh, 
arrogant, right? Because we feel like, eh, baby steps, maybe steps, eh, who cares? Who, who's, who really needs to take baby steps? And the truth is you do, right? Um, you do. You need to take some baby steps. And, and baby steps, I can't talk about baby steps. I'm talking about if you think about the ambition or the intention of a child, right, when they're trying to learn how to walk, those baby steps are actually pretty monumental, pretty significant. And so if you are too big, too arrogant to take baby steps, um, then, you know, don't expect any miracles or transformation to happen, right? Because um, just the pride right there is, um, is getting in the way of you being able to take, you know, to, to, to elevate, right? Elevate your performance. And, and, and here's the joke in this too. You know, any key athlete, any, like, like performers, their version of these baby steps are like making an adjustment to how they hold the ball at the free throw line, right? The angle of the elbow. These are the baby steps, right? The angle of the elbow, right? Holding it vertical, making sure that, you know, when the ball is in their hand, you can actually see a little bit between the ball and, and this portion of the hand, getting up to a particular point in time and releasing the shot, right? For an athlete, those are the baby steps that they take to improve performance. If you're too proud, too, uh, e you know, sort of uh, egotistical to think that you're bigger than the, than the baby steps that are required for you to um, make, you, you know, just, you're just bigger than baby steps, right? These small micro changes to be able to have a better shot, right, at winning in a particular area of life. I mean, like, don't just, you just can't cry when things aren't changing, when things aren't shifting. So that being said, take the next baby step of downloading a 24-hour blueprint, but it begins with getting a taking the quiz and knowing where you are on a scale of one to five, one being extremely unsatisfied, two being extreme, uh, I'm sorry, uh, five being extremely satisfied, right? On that scale, you're going to grade yourself in five areas, your faith, your fellowship, your finances, your fitness, and your fitness, right? And then there's some other questions that I ask in there about what kind of tools you're using to manage your time. Once you're done with that quiz, you'll have an opportunity to like see, hey, you know, uh, what your score means, right? It will be emailed to you. And then along with that, you'll have an opportunity to take a, uh, to watch a, a webinar that begins to train you on how to use these tools, right? And what I mentioned here, as far as this, um, uh, I think uh, Clinton's on here. Um, Q, how are you? Good to see you. Um, so that being said, you'll get, uh, a 25 blueprint document, just like, not just like this one, uh, but you'll get a series of different sheets. This is another sort of uh, your weekly assessment. This is where you get to hold yourself accountable uh, to make adjustments, to update, um, update sheets. Um, I could go on and on about it, but uh, the fun is in the sandbox, right? You got to get your hands dirty, take the chill code quiz, start watching the webinar, and, um, and after that webinar, some of you will have an opportunity to have a coach with your, uh, a coaching call um, with yours truly, and or depending on when you call, uh, someone who's on the team who will have, who will walk you through your coaching call, depending on when you see this video. So that being said, um, that's, that's really it for now, right? Um, and I would hope that this is clear enough. One, my assumption is you want to go from A to B, whatever your A to B is, and I hope that your B, um, your point B, is actually a blissful point, something that, you know, you salivate and your palms sweat trying to get to, that you just can't wait, that you're excited about getting to. Two, that you have specific measurable um, milestones that assist or support you in getting to that point B. Three, that you know what actions you need to be taking in order for you to get to that um to that bliss, bliss point, right? To that point B. Now, four, I, I would also hope that you're concerned about the level of self-accountability that's in place. In other words, if you don't have any accountability structure to support you in getting there, that is the very reason why it would make sense for you to take the, the chill code quiz. And from that chill code quiz, uh, from, from, from that chill code quiz, um, know what score, where you are, so that you can then improve that score in an area of life that's important to you, whether it's your faith, your fellowship, your finances, your feelings, or your fitness, right? Those are the five areas, faith, fellowship, finances, feelings, and fitness. Once you start improving, you gotta know what actions you're gonna take. And that's where documents like this, right? Um, 
really come in handy. All these little circles that you see, whoop, these circles that you see, these are all the different kingdoms um, uh, that you're going to be taking action in in your daily life. So this is an entire sort of lifestyle system. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. Only real players are invited. And if you are someone who um, is tired of starting and stopping and starting and stopping and quitting things and you need a swift kick in the pants on your journey, I'm the person to do that for you, right? That's um, my, my, uh, my contribution to your, your journey and your life. So that being said, um, you can actually head over to, if you want the chill journey, make sure you have the information that you need. You can head over to, uh, you know, pull up the link here. All right, so you can head over to the Chill Code Journey 2020. So I'm sorry, buimadu.com. That's B-U-I-H-E-M-A-D-U.com forward slash the Chill Code Journey 2020. All right, so it is buimadu.com forward slash the Chill Code Journey 2020. All right, so once you do that and you get to that page, there will be your Chill Code quiz and um, after you get on that path, it's a wrap, as they say, right? So I'll get you the quick link. Um, Quentin loves asking. Good to see you. Always good to see you, Quentin. Um, hey, Q, Mr. Love. Um, I'll get you that information. So, but for now, for those who want to start off at the quiz level, you want to start with that quiz, assess where you find yourself, and then from there, that'll introduce you to the, uh, to the webinar that you can then learn how to improve your score and, of course, really begin to move into the future that inspires you with bliss, um, with certainty, confidence, clarity, and um, maybe even a little bit of charisma, right? Uh, how's that? So uh, anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you for listening. I appreciate you for watching. Um, and uh, this has really, really been fantastic because there's like three things happening all at once. Uh, Facebook Live video, an Instagram Live, and the podcast being recorded. Um, you know, what more could you ask for? I mean, that's, that's how you kick off the year with a blast, right? As far as content is concerned, in my opinion. And, uh, that's it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll leave the link below. Again, boomadoo.com forward slash the chill code journey to get yourself started. And I will see you guys on the other side of this. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great week. And this, uh, this, I wanted to swear and say kick ass and take names, but let's kick butt and take names. All right. Bye, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. Have a great one.